We're going to close out today's show with our state representative, Holly Reshine. She's going to talk with us about a number of legislative issues that she worked on this session. She'll also touch with us on a very important topic down here, and that is wastewater funding. Holly, thank you for being back on with me this morning. Wonderful, and thanks for always having me. Well, it's always fun being able to talk with you, Holly, and I, I know that you've had to talk about wastewater funding a lot lately, but you recently had a meeting last week with some officials down here in the Keys. Tell us about what you guys all discussed at this meeting. Absolutely, Jenna, and I don't have to tell you what a big issue this is. Um, probably the number one issue behind windstorm insurance that faces us in the community. And I got everybody together, basically from Key West to Key Largo. Key Largo Wastewater Treatment District, the Village of Isla Mirada, Monroe County, <clears throat> the City of Key Colony Beach, the City of Marathon, the Florida Keys Aqueduct Authority, and the City of Key West. So every community across the Keys, we got together, we sat down in City Hall in um, Key Colony Beach. I wanted to pick a, a middle ground area and basically hashed out how we want to move forward and request the next $50 million, which is due, you know, to help us out with the billion dollar unfunded state mandate, which is the Keys Wastewater Plan. And there were a couple issues that came up um, this past session and, you know, when I wasn't able to bring home the next $50 <clears throat> million, and that was debt for debt. You know, the, that $50 million was um, a bond issue, and so you have debt paying for debt, and that's not necessarily the most sound fiscal policy and so we thought why don't I request 50 million dollars in general revenue and the governor sees that that's probably the best option for us even though that's a really big ask and this is another issue that that um, I, I brought up um, it's one thing for the governor to put 50 million dollars in his budget it's another thing for me to fight for it and to champion for it <clears throat> with the Senate in the House. I mean, it's $50 million from one project is a very big ask. And um, Commissioner Murphy mentioned, I had mentioned the Everglades and how it's all one big circle and, you know, the Everglades are very, very important to the Keys and, and you know, everything that flows out of the Everglades flows down to the Keys. And making it complementary to the even bigger, um, widely accepted Everglades restoration project and, and like I said, not trying to take money necessarily from that project, but being part of that project. And so maybe there's some way to funnel um, money for the keys through that. So that, that's an option out there. Um, it was also brought up that maybe making the allocations more fair based on um, permitted capacity or that when you hear people talk about EDUs. You know, how many people are we hooking up? How many homes are we hooking up? How many businesses are we hooking up? And basing the allocations on that, which I think is, is fair. It's all about equity. Mm -hmm. And I just was really, really, really pleased about how cooperative people were and the spirit of cooperation what, uh, that was there, or, you know, during the meeting. And we're going to have subsequent meetings, just a couple more here real quickly to hammer out the details of the ILA or the inter interlocal agreement that I really would like to have in my hand. Um, everybody sign off on it, again, from Key Largo to Key West, that I can take to Tallahassee and say, here you go, guys, this is, we've agreed upon it, we're, we're unified, and make my, my ask. Um, for the next fifty million dollars. Wonderful. So you're really optimistic then, Holly, that we could get this fifty million dollars. Absolutely. And I think the more we, we show ourselves as a team and not necessarily just Key Largo or Key West, but we, we unify ourselves as the keys. I think that's how we are seen anyways in Tallahassee. And um, I think it will it will be better. Good, good. All right, Holly, another issue that, of course, is a big deal here in Key West is affordable housing. Can you tell us the latest on that? That was something you really worked on this past session. Absolutely, and, and anybody who lives in the Keys thinks that the, the phrase affordable housing is an oxymoron. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're just the lack of it, the price of it. I mean, what's affordable? In Key West, um, there, there are a few more options than, say, you know, in the Middle Keys or the Upper Keys, but there's more population here, so we need to have more, more units, more homes for people. And the Florida Housing Finance Corporation is the, the entity in Tallahassee who kind of doles out affordable housing projects across the state, and it's kind of the funding mechanism for those projects. And usually, typically, they set aside, like, two projects for Monroe County, knowing 
the difficulties that we face in the Keys, transportation, mm -hmm. the expense, the environment is an issue. Um, we have a whole host of issues when it comes to affordable housing and building in the Keys. The environment, I, you know, it's definitely preserving the environment is, is a major one for me. And so these allocations are usually there. But every now and then, you know, it's competition. Mm -hmm. Another county will, will get our, our allocations, and that's just unacceptable. And so what I did was sponsor an amendment to the affordable housing bill this year, the community development bill. It was called House Bill 437. I sponsored an amendment, and it passed both the House and the Senate, to set aside two projects every year in statute for Monroe County in perpetuity. You know, as long as the funding is there, we will get those projects. And the, uh, the governor did sign that bill. Good. And so I'm very, very yeah. pleased that we will, um, we will have those projects. Great. So that is good news. And now, Holly, the last thing I want to talk with you about this morning is something called the Queen Conch Memorial. Absolutely. Tell me about this. Absolutely. <laughs> and this is one of my more, um, more fun bills that mm -hmm. I co-sponsored with Representative Jose Felix Diaz. He's out of Miami. And of course, you know, I'm a part of the Miami-Dade delegation. Half of my district is in Miami-Dade County, but so it was, um, it was neat to sponsor this with him. A group, uh, an environmental watchdog group out of Colorado, of all states, petitioned the U.S. Fish and Wildlife to put Queen Conch, which of course Queen Conch is, you know, conch fritters, conch chowder, mm -hmm. everything cracked conch that we, uh, that we eat down here, to put the Queen Conch on the endangered species list. And what that means is that the importation of queen conch, because of course we can't harvest it, harvest it here in the States because we just don't have the numbers, but like from the Bahamas or anywhere else, we could not import that. Therefore, restaurants wouldn't be able to serve it, conch salad, nothing, um, if it were on the endangered species list. And that would be devastating, obviously. We are the conch republic. Right. <laughs> not having any conch to serve would be a nightmare. <laughs> and so we passed a memorial out of the House of Representatives this year basically asking Congress to not move on that petition, to leave the Queen Conch as it is. Um, it's already a sustainable fishery. We only import from countries who have sustainable practices. And the FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, at this time doesn't see that it's necessary either. So it's just kind of one of those weird policies out there that could have devastating effects on our community. And so I was happy to um, co-sponsor that. Wonderful. Absolutely. Another good bill. All right, Holly, thank you for being back on with us this morning. Holly will be joining us next month, so be sure to stay tuned. She'll have some updates on wastewater funding and also the construction here in Key West. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in this morning. I hope that you can join me every Tuesday through Friday at 7 a.m. and again at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day.